Hello everyone, welcome back to a brand new Tech Reviews and Gadgets episode where today we're reviewing a fully automatic 360 photo booth and you guys are currently watching Krilly. Today's episode, we're taking a look at the photo booth 360 degree photo booth. I don't know if you guys have actually seen this on social media, but this is a very hot product. A lot of people who do both day events, weddings, you know, any entertainment events, even business events, you may have seen this in action. And essentially, it's just a base that has a motor with it, and you can have like a selfie stick kind of tripod set up on it and it would spin around and you can get like this nice 360 degree um, you know, video of you while you're standing on the base. And the one we have here is by far one of the, probably the biggest ones you can get. This can actually suit seven people on it at one time. You know, most photo booths, you know, maybe two or three, but this one can have seven people on it at one time. It is really heavy though. This metal case that you're seeing here with the photo booth inside, it's around 200 pounds to carry this. So you do gotta keep in mind, um, if you wanna get this biggest size, you wanna make sure you have adequate space and you have you know, the adequate people that can help you when you are transporting this because it is heavy. But there is multiple sizes you can get, you know, those ones that can suit one to two people, three to four. So if you wanted to, you can get ones that are smaller, but this is by far probably the biggest ones you can actually get on the market. And with this company, there's actually two packaging methods you can get. You can get the one where it comes in this nice metal case that kind of protects it and it can also serve as a travel case. But they also have like this honeycomb kind of boxing kind of case. I did take a picture of mine before it was pre-shipped and it's similar to that um, picture that I'm showing you right now um, where you can kind of get the uh, photo booth in that case. And with that method, they do include some trolleys so you can actually roll it around. But with this metal case, there is wheels, but you do need to actually screw them in yourself. So that's something you are gonna need to set up eventually. But you can see it's a massive case. We were able to fit it in our SUV, but um, you know, do keep in mind if you are gonna purchase this, maybe measure your cargo space so you can actually have adequate space for this photo booth. Additionally, with this photo booth, there is an application you can utilize um, with this photo booth that the company does supply. And they even give you about four months of free usage that you can utilize. And then with the application, you know, you can go in, add effects, make videos on the go. So you don't necessarily need to go to your laptop and edit the video. You can kind of have videos on demand. And with this photo booth, I did forget to mention, you are able to use phones, you can use tablets, you can use DSLR cameras, and you can also use action cameras with it. It's not necessarily just phones that you can use this photo booth with. Another big thing that I did forget to mention in the introduction part of the video is that with this photo booth, you don't necessarily need to have it plugged into a PAL supply to utilize it. You can actually utilize this photo booth um, battery PAL. So if you have a power bank, which you are able to actually get through this company, you are able to get a 12,600 milliamp hour battery for the model of the 360 degree uh, photo booth, but they also have this 10,000 milliamp for this ring light. Um, so if you wanted to, you can actually have this photo booth running on battery power. And additionally with this photo booth, there is a logo service that this company provides. So if you wanted to, you can actually get a custom logo to put on the base of this photo booth. So if you have like a business, like a proper business, you can get your logo designed on this photo booth and that kind of adds some sort of, you know, customization and some sort of, um, some sort of personalization that you can have with your own photo booth. But before we get started with this installation, unboxing, you know, demonstration and testing and all that stuff, make sure you go down below and hit that subscribe button and also turn on post notifications on to get updates and alerts when we do upload. Have any questions or concerns, leave a comment, enjoy the video, make sure you leave a like, and also share this video out to anybody who may be interested in a photo booth or if they're looking into this, you know, looking to get into this kind of business, um, you know, show this video out to them. Because my videos, we you know, we really go in and show a comprehensive dive of the products we are reviewing. So this will be a longer video
video, but it will show you all the different things you can do with photo booths. Lastly, product information, specifications, and details will be listed down below in the video description alongside with the link to make a purchase. If you are interested in buying a photo booth, there is various different models and different sizes you can get. So definitely take a look if you want to get a smaller model or if you want to get the maximum and big model that we have here, definitely take a look at the links in the description if you are interested in buying this photo booth. But right now, what we're going to do is actually move to the first look and unboxing portion of this video. So let's actually get cracked inside this metal case. We're gonna unbox it. We're gonna see all the different accessories that are included with this photo booth. But there is a few things you wanna keep in mind before you unbox this you know, metal case. You wanna make sure you're facing the orientation properly. So in my case, I'm gonna have mines open up towards the floor right here. So you wanna make sure that you have these kind of facing down or facing the direction you wanna open it because this actually has like a hinge system. So when you open it, the lid is on a hinge. You don't take the top off completely. So you wanna keep that in mind. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start facing mines down. And if you do have people who can help you, that's great. It might be beneficial to have somebody help you, you know, set this down on the floor or move it around, but I'm gonna try to do this myself. And we're just gonna kind of face this down kind of move it down this way there we go and you'll see those these locking mechanisms on the bottom of this metal case and that shows you that uh, this is the top of the metal case and all you need to do is you lift it turn it around do the same thing for this lift it turn it around and it unlocks so now you should be able to open up the case and you can see we opened up the case properly now and it just opens up it has a nice hinge system and it stands up like upright like that so you can see why it's important to make sure your orientation is both uh you know the way it should be because if you opened it upside down you wouldn't be able to open up this case you can see inside we have this nice cushiony kind of um, you know bag that protects the base and it has all the different accessories inside I'm going to try to get mines out of the metallic case here and what I'm going to try to do is just set this down over here for now so right now you can see we have the metal flight case you know back up into its normal positioning and obviously if this was like a real event you would have this you know off to the corner or maybe even in a completely different room away from everybody so it's nice to see that you are able to kind of keep everything in this nice little bag that they included so what we're going to do is we're going to get low we're going to unzip this bag and take a look at all the different accessories and this bag does have a handle so it does make it a little easier to kind of carry there we go and i'm going to ship this just like that we're gonna open it up. Whoa, look at that. Everything's included here, all the different accessories. Basically everything that you need to get this up and running is inside this bag. And what I like about it is they did include this 360 photo booth packing list. So right here is our LED uh, ring light or aperture light, whatever you wanna call it. If you are gonna you know, use sizzles for this, make sure you get heavy duty ones. Before I was using this sizzles and it wasn't cutting through, uh, you wanna get something that's sharp so you can actually get into all these different crevices and actually cut apart these zip ties. So what I'm gonna just do now is kinda get in and kinda you know, untie everything. So with the zip ties, it is a little bit tricky to actually get the zip ties off, but like I said, as long as you have a sharp pair of scissors to go in and actually cut into all those little crevices, you should be totally fine. But once you get all those zip ties off, you can take all these little cases out. So like we have, I think this is one of the selfie extensions. We have, you know, some rods. This right here is actually like the angle bracket which will uh, allow the selfie stick to kind of be at an angle. And then inside these bags, we just have all the different accessories, which we're all gonna take a look at here in a second. And same thing with this bag right here. We just have all different accessories. And what I'm gonna try to do now is pull it out of this. 
go. We can take a look at the front though real quick. I can just kind of lift it so you guys can take a look. But you can see this is how it looks. This is the company sticker, but they do include um, their own labeling service. So if you wanted to, you can actually get like your own custom label on this. It doesn't have to be this um, sticker that they already pre-attached. Let's take a look inside this bag. I'm actually gonna sit on the floor. So inside this bag, we have all the different accessories for this. So you can see we have a mask. Obviously this is just for some decoration purposes. We have our fixing screw. And I do like how they labeled everything, which is good to see. We have our universal hurdle. We have our fixing bracket. We have the user manual and tell, let me tell you, you want to keep this handy. We have our AC adapter slash DC adapter. So this will supply power for this photo booth. We also have our mobile phone holder. So this would be for your cell phones holder. We have our LED strip lights. We have right here our tablet holder. So if you wanted to use a tablet with this photo booth, you are able to with this holder that they included. We also have this uh, metal ball, which is interesting. Don't know what this is, but we'll figure it out. I know this is a Bluetooth remote for shooting. And then we also have some zip ties and a USB power adapter for the LED light. And then last but not least, they actually included a wrench for us. So they included all the different um, screwdriver tools you may utilize with the installation. So that's kind of nice. Now let's check inside this compartment. I just want to make sure there's nothing in here, but there is. So this is our remote control. It even comes with a battery, which is cool to see. And you can even see this is also our motor control. Very, very interesting. Let me put that off to the side. And I think that's everything that's included inside this bag. I do like how they did include a, uh, a nice bag you can put everything into, which is cool. And then inside this bag right here, we have uh, you know more accessories. So let's take a look at it. We've got our wheels for the flight case. So if you wanted to, I can actually attach wheels to this flight case and I can move this around whenever I travel. And we also have some base screws for the bottom of this photo booth. I don't know if you guys can see that, but all around this photo booth, there's some base screws. And this allows you to kind of protect the base of the photo booth from, you know, touching the ground directly. And then additionally, we have more wheels right here. And yeah, that is it for this bag. So the very first thing that we're going to install with this photo booth is our uh, foot pads or foot cups for the base of the photo booth. And there should be, let me see, one, two, three, four, there should be eight of them. So I'm gonna open up this bag. I'm gonna pull these out. And I'm gonna go around and install each one of these. So we're gonna install one right here. So as you guys can see, we did attach all our foot cups. Um, they actually included an extra one for us. So it actually had nine, but there was only eight spots. So it is nice to see that they did include an extra one. Maybe, you know, just, just in case something happens to one. The next thing I want to try to do now is we, I think we need to flip this. We need to flip this up right now. So let's do that. We'll turn this around. There we go. And we'll flip it around like this. There we go. Just like that. You can see now we have it faced up. 
And those two ways you can supply PAL to this photo booth, you can either plug it um, through an AC slash DC cable, but you also have that battery pack. So if you wanted to, you can have this run on battery PAL. But in our case, I am gonna plug it in um, with that AC slash DC adapter. I'll just open this up and I'm gonna pull it out. I'm gonna have to kind of look underneath this and see if we can find the port that we need to plug this into. So it looks like for my port to supply PAL to this photo booth, it's near the motor. So it's a little tricky, but there's actually a port right down there. I don't know if you guys can even see that. And essentially, I'm going to untie this cable and kind of get low to the ground, plug this in. I'm gonna actually Take it underneath, plug it in right there, boom. And now, you can now take the AC adapter, take this cable, unravel it, plug this in right here. And then now, you can take this end and plug it to any power supply. I'm gonna hold off on plugging this in because we haven't attached the angle bracket. But once it's ready to go, you can now just plug this into any outlet. Step two is installing the angle bracket. And the angle bracket, the angle adjuster is basically what's inside this bag right here. And we're gonna untie it or unzip this bag and we're gonna pull it out. And essentially this is what like the selfie stick is gonna stand on, your phone is gonna stand on. It's gonna allow you to kind of have those things off at an angle. You need to look around your 360 photo booth to see where exactly you need to insert it. For my case, it's actually right here, but you can spin this around. So you can see it's spinning around. And essentially I just need to align the end of this into the insertion right here. So I'm just gonna slide this in. You wanna make sure it goes in. And I think I need to unloosen those knobs completely and then slide it in and then tighten those knobs back in. So that's exactly what I'm doing right now. I'm loosening up those knobs and it should come out here in a second. There we go, got that side. So now I can slide that in. And let me see if it says anything about the distance. It doesn't say anything about the distance so I'm probably just gonna keep mine maybe like right there. And then you can take your knobs and screw them back in. You can take your fixed screw, screw those back in. Sometimes it's a little tricky to kind of get those lined up. And you wanna make sure this is extremely tight. You don't want this, you know, flying off or undoing itself when people are all using this. So now, we can spin this around. You can hear it's actually beeping. So now we have that attached. We wanna install our selfie telesonic rod. And I believe that is what's inside here. Open up this drawstring. There we go. I'm gonna try to pull this out. There we go. And I think this slides right in the middle of this. You wanna use these fixed screws to attach it onto this angle adjuster. So I'm going to open this up. And I'm gonna unscrew one end of each. And essentially now, we want to line, line things up. So let's do that. There we go. Line that up and then take the other end, hold it up. There we go. And make sure it's tight because you don't want this to move around. Okay. That should be good. And now we have to do the same thing for the top one now. And make sure you can get that lined up and through the other side. There we go. And now 
I will tighten it. There we go. So that's good to go now. And this can move around obviously. The next thing that we want to install is the other end of the selfie stick, which I believe is inside this bag. I'm just gonna pull this out and take it out of its uh, bubble wrap. And this screws on to this part right here. We're just gonna screw that on and make sure it's tight. Cause this will house the ring light, it will house um, you know, where you put your phone, um, your tablet, your DSLR, whatever camera you use with this, this is what's gonna hold everything. And what I like about it is you can raise it to certain heights, but obviously the higher you go, the less practical it becomes, but it depends on your setup. So if you wanted to, you can extend this rod to fit certain different um, you know, lengths. And with the angle adjuster, right now we have it flush at 90 degrees, so it's a right angle. But you can go in and adjust it to, you know, you know, shift it to different angles. So probably when we do test this out, I will probably shift it. So it's kind of like an obtuse angle. I think that's the correct terminology. So it can kind of be, you know, outwards a little more. But the next thing that we need to install is, let's see. We need to stick the LED strip to its base and then connect it to a five volt adapter for the LED strip. So the LED strip lights is inside this bag right here. And what I'm gonna do is open it up, pull all of its different accessories out. I think that's everything. And essentially it wants me to attach it to the base. And I believe the base is this bar right here. So let me unravel this, but I'm not gonna unravel it all the way. Uh, let me take a look here. So yeah, I think the base part is right here. So it's not this, it's this bar right here. And I think you can start anywhere, but I would recommend for you to start it where you plug in your adapter so that you can kind of have all your cables running at one place. So I'm gonna start mines from back here. And essentially what we're gonna do is actually peel it and stick it onto this space right here. And with the LED strip lights, there's actually double-sided tape, so don't pull this off because there's no um, sticky side on underneath it. So you wanna keep that white layer on and just remove that top blue layer. So just like that. And then now you can go to your base and attach the LED strip lights to wherever you want to place it. I'm gonna try to keep mine like in the middle maybe. There we go. And essentially I just gotta kind of wrap around this. So this is gonna take some time. But you essentially just wanna make sure that sticks on well. Pull that apart. Stick. And hopefully it's not uneven when I finish this, but okay. Stick, pull apart, stick. There we go. Pull apart and continue sticking it until you basically wrap around this 360 booth. So now you guys can see we attach the LED um, strip lights all around the 360. And I kind of wrapped it around towards the end right here. And there is actually a little bit of extra. You can cut it off if you want to, or you could kind of just wrap it around the top part right here, which I kind of did. And you can see this is where the power supply for the LED strip light ends. The next thing that we're gonna attach to this 360 photo booth is the ring light. And with the ring light, you wanna use a metal ball. So inside this bag, they included two of them. We need one of them in this case. I'm just gonna pull this out, toss it off to the side. Take it out of its bag here. And we want to attach it onto this. Screw that in. There we go. And now we can take our ring light and attach it onto this. So now with this ball head, you can get this ring light to face any angle and direction. So that's why it's important 
to not just put the ring light on the selfie telesonic rod. We might have done that, but <laughs> we, no one needs to know. <laughs> so now you can see, once I loosen this up, this can face any direction. So this ball head is pretty important. There we go. Make sure it's tight though. There we go. Ring light is attached. Now we're gonna attach our fix holder for the phone, you know, for all the different accessories. We want to attach this threaded um, screw. And you have three different options. I'm gonna keep mine in the middle. I'm just gonna screw that in. And this is flexible, so you can like flex this around. And let me take a look at the instruction manual again. It says here, you want to attach your phone holder. So let's take a look here. Phone holder. So fix brackets. Phone holder. So they actually, they included a, a few of them that you can use, which is nice. And I believe all I gotta do now is kind of screw this in. There we go. Boom. So now you can put your phone in the middle of the ring light. And then the next thing we want to do is install our fixed bracket and phone holder. So this is another phone holder. And we want to install our fixed brackets. Um, so our fixed brackets are what it is inside this bag right here. We need to unbag it. With this photo booth, there's a lot of different brackets you can utilize. You know, you got phone holders, you got um, tripod holders, you can even use DSLR cameras. Right now we have that simple phone holder within this ring light, but this is another phone holder that you can have off to the side. So what I'm gonna do is attach this right here. And we're gonna uh, tighten this up by using this clever designed uh, lever right here. And now you can open up this, and this is another phone clip you can have. So if I wanted to, you can obviously rotate this, attach this on, screw that in. And you can have this in portrait or landscape. Right now I have mine's obviously in landscape, but I can go in and put this in portrait mode as well. So you can see right now, we have it in portrait mode, so that's really cool. And let's see what else we have left. Um, fixed bracket and phone holder. So the fixed bracket that it's talking about here, I believe is actually one of these. So this is our universal uh, holder. So you can use that to attach, I believe, your phones, and like just basically anything really. And then right here we have our tablet holder, and this is obviously for tablets. You can see there is differences with each of these. And with the tablet, obviously, since tablets are usually long, you know, this one can stretch out. So that's the whole point of this right here. And I can even extend it, stretch it out like that. And then you can see we have another kind of locking mechanism that we kind of did with that, but for a tablet right here. So you are able to actually attach this on to the stand as well. In my case, I am gonna attach that tablet holder so we can actually utilize one of the power banks that they, um, they can get and use with this 360 booth. And I'm essentially going to unloosen this up a little bit. And once you get the outer screws off of this little um, ring kind of setup, you can go to your base, your stand, line it up so you can see how like it's it's uh, lined up like that and then essentially you just screw this back in so now let's screw that in make sure that's very tight and then do the same thing on this side there we go so that's already attached and attach this onto here And rotate that around, kind of 
get these to kind of lock in place. And I believe we got to slide down. There we go. I decided to actually change my setup a little bit. There's a lot of different, like I said, a lot of configurations you can have, but I decided to use that universal clip so I can attach this PAL bank so we can supply PAL to the ring light. And with this universal clip, there's essentially a clip on the back side and then a clip on the front side. So I can technically still use this for a phone. So it's kind of like a two in one clip. And what I'm gonna do is attach it onto this right here. And I think I'm gonna have to just spin this around a few times. Make sure it's lined up. Spin it around. Spin it around until it is secure. Okay. All right. That's good. That's secure. And with this universal clip, since we have this attached, we're not gonna have any cables coming out of this ring light and wrapping around the 360 because this will be moving. So if, if I had a cable, you know, all the way coming down here, it's just, it's gonna wrap around the 360. So it's kind of important to have a battery pack so you can actually plug it in through its source so then no cables kind of run all over the place. So now I can just take this. I don't even have to untie this. Like I could just keep it wrapped up like that and plug it into our out one because there's two outs for this. We can plug it into that USB type A port, just like so. And now it's gonna get PAL directly from this portable PAL bank. So now let's power on the ring light just to see how it looks. So you can see we have all our different button controls. We have our power on and off. We have our uh, brightness increase, brightness decrease, and we can switch it to different color temperatures. So we're gonna power this on. And you can see, I believe this is the coolest setting you can have it at. Um, if you click the button again, this is like a more warm light. And if I click it again, this is our natural or neutral light. So we have cool, warm, natural, neutral. It's kind of like a blend between the warm and cool light. And I can go in, decrease the brightness, increase the brightness. But I'm gonna probably set mine at that cool light because I like that industrial kind of look. And with this configuration, you can see the cables don't get wrapped around this. You know, that's the benefit of having a power bank attached onto the rod so that the cable management doesn't wrap around all your different, you know, it doesn't wrap around the 360 motor. So it is kind of uh, crucial if you can get one of these battery packs to utilize. The next thing we need to do is supply power to the 360 motor and also that LED strip light that we added around the 360 uh, photo booth. So there's two different methods. Like I showed you guys, you're able to supply power via a AC slash DC cable, or you can use a portable power bank. And in our case, I believe this is 12,600 milliamps. So let's actually utilize the power bank method. So in order to do that though, I'm gonna have to swap the cables out. So instead, let me plug so you can either use this yellow and black cable or black and black. The only difference is these have angle uh, brackets, whereas this is a straight, you know, end cable. So that's the only difference between these two cables. Um, I'm going to use the angled one. I'm going to plug the yellow side in here. And I'm going to go in and disconnect that original cable. And I'm going to try to plug this in back into here now. And I know you guys can't really see this, but... There we go, plug that in. And the good thing about using a power bank is now you see with the LED lights, I can go in and have that plugged in and then just tuck it underneath this photo booth. So it is kind of beneficial if you can get a battery so that you can just kind of have all your cables out of the way. So I'm gonna plug this in here. So this will power the LED lights and the 360 motor. And essentially once I power it on, everything should power up. And hopefully this doesn't just spin around. That would not be good. So I'm gonna power it on. And you can see we have everything on and ready to go right now. You can see we have the LED lights on. Look how cool the LED lights are. These actually are, I believe, RGBIC Dream Color LED lights. And you can see it's making these nice effects right now. So you can see with each individual LED light, it's able to change and progress to different colors. 
So right now, everything's ready to go, essentially. We can take a look at that RGB controller real quick, just to kind of see some of the different effects it has. We can see they did include a nice instruction manual. Wow, there's actually 366 kinds mode switch. Wow. So this actually has a lot of different colors and options you can actually display that mini LED control to. Like you can set this to do all sorts of different transition and effects. And I think right now it's just doing like an auto, auto effect. But I can power on and off, power on. I can change it to solid colors. So we got red, green, blue, you know, all the traditional colors right here. So if you wanna get this to suit like a, a particular event, like let's say the event is where you wear blue or it's like a, a green event, you know, you can kind of get your lights set up to that color. Um, but most likely, I'm probably gonna stick with auto because with auto you kind of get all these nice cool effects and I believe you can go in and actually select um, specific effects so you don't have it you know changing every so often you can probably keep it in this mode if you wanted to um, with this controller but I'm gonna keep mine in auto for the sake of this video and the next thing we want to take a look at is the remote control that's gonna control this 360 booth and it's inside this bag right here. It says remote control and motor control. And we're gonna unbag this and I believe everything's in here. Let me just set this down here since I don't have a table. I'm gonna pull that out. So they included two uh, lithium batteries and oh, it's a bracket. So you can actually have this hooked up to your stand I'm guessing. And this is a digital remote. Please install battery before facing remote and face the plus sign up. So let's pull this apart. And I think I need to lift it, there we go. And we're gonna take one of these batteries, open it up, pull it out and you wanna face, I said the plus sign facing up, so, and let's insert it in right here. You gotta put it in from the bottom side. And just squeeze it in. There we go. That should be good to go. And you just wanna slide this back in. There we go. So this should be good to go. And if I turn it on, it might start spinning around. So let's just test it real quick and then I'll move everything off to the side. And yeah, it's already moving around. Very cool. But yeah, very interesting. So I think what we're gonna do now is shift our focus and attention to the application and then we'll test it out. And then that's basically it for the ring light. So now let's take a look at the application. The application is called Chack Talk, and you can get this on Google Play or the Apple App Store. And the company did supply four months courtesy service, so you can actually use this application for four months free. And they also, I think, supplied you with one gigabytes of cloud service. So now let's take a look at the application. This is the main interface of the application, but if this was your first time you know, signing in, you will have to create an account, verify your email, and then create a password, and then you'll proceed to the home page of the application. But since I've already done that, it took me to the main page, and you can see it says 360 controller C uh, underscore C402 connected. So I believe this might already be connected to my phone. And the way to test that out is we go to the controller page and I click play. Let's see. So it, it is already connected to my phone because I think there's like Bluetooth connection um, to this. So if your Bluetooth's on and your phone pairs it up, it will connect automatically where you don't need to scan that QR code that's on the back of your user manual. So in my case, I didn't need to do that. So if I click play, we will see this start uh, spinning around. 
And with the application, it's a lot more awesome because I can go in, I can even set the duration of how long I want this to spin around. So right now, I have it set to five seconds. But I can go in and set a custom duration. So if I wanted this to go on for 10 minutes, or at 1,000 seconds, because it looks like you can't put in minutes, you only have to put it, you can only put in seconds. I can do this for 1,000 seconds, and this thing will just spin around for the next 1,000 seconds. So that's kind of cool. And I can reverse it, so if I right now, if I click on it, it will start spinning the other direction. And I can also increase the speed with the application. So in my opinion, if you can utilize the application, you'd be better off because you can kind of have that nice visual um, graphic interface where you can kind of click through, do all your different configurations, get the speed you want, get the duration you want. And with that button uh, remote, it's a little more tricky and more finicky. But with the application, I could stand anywhere and control this. Obviously, I gotta be in close proximity to it, but it looks like the maximum speed is eight. So this is the maximum speed with this uh, photo booth. Really cool. And obviously with the application too, I can pause. So now it's gonna slow down and pause. With this purchase, like I said, the company does supply four months courtesy of the application. You just have to scan that QR code or enter that number that's on the back of this user manual. Obviously, I'm not gonna give you guys my code, come on, <laughs> that's mine. <laughs> but you are able to go in and do that. So right now on the application, you can see we are at VIP level. And with the VIP level, you get that one gigabytes of cloud storage, and you get access to certain and cool effects and things that you weren't able to if you didn't input in that courtesy code or purchase VIP. So you can go in, create events. So right now I can go in, click all, you know, type, let's just say birthday, uh, time doesn't really matter because we're just doing a test, home for the location, and it's a party, okay? And then click next, I can select my camera size, I can set, you know, this 360 photo booth to, you know, certain different settings so that it automatically, like when somebody comes in here, they can just click a button and boom, this photo booth will just start doing its own thing and I don't have to intervene or do anything. And I can even set filters up. I can set um, certain different effects. I can upload graphics and images. So like if I wanted, you know how like Snapchat has like those different filters you can have? You can have that kind of set up for certain events. Really cool. Click on next. You see, overlay sticker, event background. I can go in, go into my phone, select different backgrounds and backdrops and stuff I have and add it so that it automatically adds it to that finalized image or video. I can even go in and add background music. So if I wanted to have like, you know, hip hop or whatever music in the background, you know, I can do that. And it'll automatically just set everything up. I can even set a file size limit. And then all I gotta do is confirm event. And then I can go in here and click enter. And then people can scan this QR code that shows up on my phone and they'll get access to all the clips that they film. So you can see that is really cool. You can set events up, which is cool. Additionally, you know, you can do all the, you know, modifying your password and stuff. That's all basic stuff. But yeah, with the VIP, you do have access to more features though. And then in the gallery, it will show you all the recent clips, all the recent um, you know things that you did with this photo booth. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna test this out. We're just gonna do a quick little sample video just to see how this 360 photo booth really performs. So now we're gonna do a mock test. We're just gonna basically hop on top of this 360 photo booth and test out some of the different features you have. So you can see on my phone screen, this is a very cool interface. And I'm gonna slide my phone in here. And another thing that I didn't do was, you can see how like I told you with that um, angle bracket, you wanna have it at, like, at an obtuse angle, right? But right now we have it at a right angle, so you can go in and adjust this. But the cool thing is they made it so that you're able to um, kind of rotate this around. So technically I don't really need to, and since I am just testing this out in the video, it's not that big of a deal. So right now, we have me in the video frame right now. I can go in, change the rot uh, rotation direction. So we have it at clockwise, but you can also do anti-clockwise. You can change the rotation speed. We're gonna do eight. We can do video duration. We're gonna do 15 seconds for hours. In the video mode, you can go in. Um, you can set it to different modes. So let's just try a normal mode for now. 
I can go in, add filters. So if I wanted to, I can add a filter to myself. Ooh, that's kind of cool, look at that. <laughs> that's very neat. And then let's keep it with that filter. I could also swap the camera around. So if I wanted to, I can have the camera swapped around. So if I wanted to get that really good quality, I can actually have this face me, the backside of my phone, so I can get that even higher quality footage. We could do photos. You could also do boomerang. You could do slow motion. You could do GIFs or GIFs, whatever it's pronounced, I don't know. Um, and then you could go in and even set a beauty mode. So right now we have none. You could do medium and it's probably gonna clear up some of my imperfections and you can see well, with it high, you can see it just kind of clears up my skin completely. So we're gonna do none for that. And we're just gonna do a quick, simple video. You can even turn on the flash, but obviously since I have it facing that way, it doesn't make any sense for me to have the flash on. And yeah, boom. Let's, let's do a test. Let's, let's click on the middle button right here and it's gonna probably go around for 15 seconds here and we're gonna just test this out. Three, two, one. <laughs> this is interesting, look at that. <laughs> obviously like, you know, <laughs> you gotta get like the ambience, you know, like obviously you would have music and you would have like props and masks and stuff, but once the video is done, it stops, it saves the file, I can save it, I could publish it, I can share it, I can even add filters in it. I, so even with the filters, you can go in and add it afterwards if you want. You can add stickles. So if I wanted to, I can add certain frames. It's kind of cool though, honestly, look at that. Put a frame in the middle, add text, birthday party, you know, obviously you would spend more time um, setting this up though, you know, this would be something you would probably set up and then have people go up and actually use it. And you could even put music. So if you have music, um, you can go in and actually play certain songs if you have your own music. So I did click the publish button and what's gonna happen now, it's publishing, it's basically creating that video file and it's gonna save it to my phone. You can see right here and I can save, publish it upload to both day, I can even add a description, save and publish, and essentially it will save onto the device you're filming on. In my case, it's the phone, so it's gonna save onto the phone, it's uploading, it says it's about 99%, uh, it's done. I can click on it, and I think I can share it by clicking this, and then somebody can come up, I can share it to them um, by texting it, or is, you know, saving it onto my device and then off offloading it to like a computer or a laptop. But I know you can also set it up where you can have a QR code. So if you have a QR code, someone can go up to your phone, scan the QR code and it'll save it to their phone once they're done shooting their clip. So that's kind of cool. Let's do another quick test, you know, just one more quick one. Um, let's go to camera and we're gonna set this up right here, okay. And this time I'm gonna to try to be a little more cheerful and you know, kind of have more ambience when I'm kind of just moving around. Click on a filter, we can click on uh, this one right here. Oh, that's kind of cool. Um, let's do a slow mo, let's do a boomerang one. I, I wanna see what that one is real quick. Record. Okay, it's filming. <laughs> Obviously you need to stand in the middle. It's so weird because I don't got music playing right now. But it's setting up a boomerang, it's Obviously processing. In the middle. Let me turn this down. But you can see it's processing. And then if I wanted to, I could publish that, share it, add music, add text, add graphics, just like I did with the other one. So that was a basic test of the Futoboo's photo booth. And this is a 360 photo booth. And you saw with my demonstration, you have a lot of different capabilities and effects. I know my test was basic, but there was a lot more you can do with the application if you really wanna configure this. I don't have a lot of time to really get into all the juicy things, but you can go in and really customize your effects and things and save your videos and save it so that people can scan your QR code. You can have a tablet, you can have different setups. You can even have DSLR. You can just just do all sorts of different setups with this photo booth. But with my basic test, I hope you guys were able to kind of see some of the basic things you can do with it. You can save things to your gallery. But yeah, overall, it's not a bad photo booth. I really do enjoy it. Um, there's a lot of capabilities, like I said. 
And you know, there is a few things I want to mention, and I did already mention before, but when people get off, make sure this is completely off and they don't step on this. But yeah, that's that's the photo booth. And you know, you can use this for numerous different events. You can use it for weddings, you can use it for birthday parties, um, corporate business events, you can use it for just any entertainment events. And it definitely, it's, it's unique, I gotta say, and I do enjoy it. The overall installation was actually really easy. In my case, it took a little longer because one, it's my first time setting it up, but now that you guys have this video, it shouldn't be that bad. And two, it took me a while to set up because I had to explain all the different features. So when you guys set it up and watch this video, it should hopefully you know clear up things and you will be hopefully able to kind of get this up and running a lot more faster than I was able to. But yeah, I really enjoy it. But um, you know, definitely take a look at potentially getting that power bank so you can power up your ring light and also power up the motor that's built in so that you don't necessarily need to um, you know, have cables running. So definitely look into that. Thank you all for watching this comprehensive review. If you did enjoy this video, make sure you go down below and hit that subscribe button and also turn on post notifications on to get updates and alerts when we do upload. Have any questions or concerns about this photo booth, make sure you go down below and leave a comment as I do respond and reply to all my comments. So if any questions or concerns about this product, feel free to ask me in the comments section down below. Also leave a like if you did enjoy the video and also share this video out to anybody who may be interested in a photo booth. And as always, you know, product information, specifications, and details will be listed down below in the video description alongside with the link to make a purchase if you're interested in taking a look at this product or taking a look at some of the other variants you can get with this photo booth. Hopefully you enjoyed watching this video. I had a blast setting this up and you know configuring it and kind of getting it to work and function properly. And I really hope I would see you all on the next episode. Clearly signing off. Thank you all for watching and have a good rest of your day.